Hello and welcome to this video tutorial brought to you by Tutvid.com. Today we're going to take a look at creating pixie style rollovers in Dreamweaver. These are CSS based rollovers and the great thing about them is you don't have to worry about preloading your rollover images. It's really just one image and we're swapping the background positioning on the image uh, to make it look like another image is loading when really it's the same image but it's a very cool way to create uh, CSS links. Uh, navigation bars, all kinds of things like that. And you can see here, this is a navigation bar I've created. And the really cool thing about this is, the way we're going to set this up is that any link now that is placed inside of this navigation div will automatically be added to our navigation bar. We don't have to go in and create more CSS. So once you set it up, if you know your link is placed within the div you target it's going to automatically be ringed with you know this button and given the background and everything's going to be set up for you so it's very very cool and it's very easy to do so let's run through how to do this uh, real quick uh, let's just take a quick preview look at what this looks like so right here in Dreamweaver I'm going to hit this little globe and I'm going to say preview in Firefox and here we have it you can see when I roll over the buttons nice a little uh, button change, uh, a rollover. So that's what we're going to create. Let's hop back into Dreamweaver. The Pixie CSS rollover journey begins over here in Photoshop where we actually create the rollovers. However, before we can start in Photoshop, we need to grab a few pieces of information. The information we need is the width of our navigation div and the height. So I'm going to open up my uh, doc over here. I'm going to double click on CSS styles. And right here, I've got pound wrapper, pound navigation, which is targeting that div with the ID navigation. I'm going to double click on that. And it's going to bring up my definition box. I'm going to go to the box category. And I can see my height is 35. There is no width, so it's going to fill out to the width of the parent element. So I know that my height is 35. So my Photoshop document's got to be 35 tall. So I'm going to look for the parent element, which is wrapper. I'm going to double click on wrapper, and I'm going to check the width. Your box, uh, the width is 800. All right, so I can see here one, two, three, four, five, six links uh, divided by 800. I'm not going to worry about it. I'm going to do what I did here and just set it to 100 wide. Each of these buttons is going to be 100 pixels wide, and we're not going to worry about getting it exactly to fit. So over here in Photoshop, file, new, and we're going to create a new document, 100 wide by 35 tall. Hit OK. And we're going to zoom in, Commander Control Plus, several times to really zoom ourselves right in. Now, what we're going to do is we're just going to fill this with a simple sort of yellow to yellow kind of gradient. We're going to do this using the gradient tool. So I'm going to grab the gradient tool. We need to create a custom gradient. Now that I think of it, uh, I want this sort of you know brownish, yellowish, orange color in the clothing boutique uh, font here in our logo. So I'm going to find that file here in my files panel. It's under images. I'm going to right click on logo.gif and I'm going to say open with Photoshop. It's partially going off screen for you probably. Open with Photoshop. Here we go. Great. We're in Photoshop. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to zoom right in on this. I'm going to use my eyedropper tool. I'm setting it, make sure it's set to point sample here, right there. And we're just going to grab one of these sort of darker uh, yellow, brown, tan colors from Clothing Boutique. Once we have that here in our swatches area, close this file, come back over here, open up the gradient tool, double click on that gradient uh, swatch up there. You can see it's opened the gradient editor here. I'm going to choose black to white as my gradient. I'm going to double click on the black color stop and I'm just going to sample that sort of uh, yellowish tannish color. Hit OK. And over here on the white, I'm going to double click that. And here, I'm just going to kind of wing it. I'm going to go to the yellows. I'm going to grab a very sort of light buttery yellow like that, maybe slightly desaturated. So a very buttery yellow slash overly saturated tan color. Hit OK once we have our gradient. Start at the top, draw straight down. I'm holding the shift key to make sure I'm staying in a straight line. And there is our initial button state. The next thing I want to do, hit command, command if you're on the Mac, control if you're on the PC, and J. You can see it pops that right up onto its own layer. Right there, we have two layers now. The next thing we want to do is make this document twice as tall as it is now. We want this to be 100 by 70. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go image, canvas size, and I'm going to set my height to 35. This is not setting the actual height of the document to 35. It's going to add 35 pixels, which is going to double the height of the document, because right now you can see it is currently at 35 pixels. However, I want all 35 pixels to be placed beneath the pixels that are there now. So you can see I've got this center box selected in the anchor section. I'm going to choose the top center box. You can see it's going to put pixels below into the sides, really because we're not expanding the width at all. It's only going to put pixels below. So I'm going to hit OK. And you can see there we have it. 
What I can do now is select my layer one, which is the layer I just copied. Grab my move tool, the hotkey for that, by the way, is V. I'm just gonna pull this straight down, holding the shift key, all the way until it lines up with the very bottom of our document. Now, we're just gonna add a couple little layer styles to this. So, with that layer selected, we're gonna go layer, layer style, and uh, we're gonna throw an inner glow on this. So, inner glow. And uh, over here in layer style, first thing we're gonna do is change the color. Right now it's a very buttery yellow. We wanna make it with sort of a dark brownish yellow right down in here, hit okay. And I'm gonna set my blend mode to multiply. I'm gonna set the size to 20, that's nice and big. And opacity, let's try around 20, and let's push it up to 30. 30 looks good. And we're also going to throw a stroke on this. So stroke, you can see when I add the stroke, it just places a black line across the center. Don't worry about that. That's just because the position is set to outside. And the only outside part of this lower rectangle you can see is right across the middle. If we change this position to inside, you can see, you can see the whole stroke now. I want the size to be one. And the color, what we're going to do when, this, when your color picker shows up, uh, anywhere outside of the color picker, you get the eyedropper tool. So what I want to do is just select one of these sort of yellowish tans in the center of our gradient down here. So I'm going to choose like that right there and hit OK and hit OK again. So now basically what's going to happen is only the top portion of this image is going to display as the background of our link until we roll over and then we're going to say, hey, CSS, change the way this background is displayed and display the lower half of this image. It's pretty easy to do, and that's what we're going to do now. But before we get to that, we have to save this. So Command Shift Alt or Control, or excuse me, Command Shift Option if you're on the Mac, or Control Shift Alt if you're on the PC, and the letter S to save this for the web. And let me drag this completely onto screen here. And I'm going to save it as a JPEG. Compression quality high or 75. You can set your quality to 75. And uh, I'm just going to choose Save. And right here, I have a folder pixie rollover set aside. I'm just going to name this image RO for rollover, and I'm going to save it. I'm going to leave it open here in Photoshop because I'm thinking ahead, and I know we're going to have to come back to it uh, in a minute. So we're going to come back to it in just a second. Let's head over to Dreamweaver and uh, get ourselves a blank navigation bar to work with. Well, here we are back in Dreamweaver with a blank navigation bar document. Now, this particular document, you can see we have set up our buttons to be linked to their respective pages. Actually, if I open this up, we can see that the link is simply the pound sign. So we're just setting up a dummy link. Uh, we want to do that here with the last button, Pro Gallery. I'm going to select the text, come down to link, and just hit shift and the number three. That would be the pound symbol. And there we go. We have a bunch of dummy links set up, and they're all inside of, right here, our div called navigation or the div with the ID of navigation. That might be a little difficult for you to see. Div ID navigation. All right, so what we want to do now is use CSS to target these and give them a background image. So we're going to open up our CSS styles and uh, open up layout.css. Matter of fact, I'm going to select layout.css and then you can select any one of these links. I'm just going to choose accessories here. It's kind of the largest word. It doesn't matter though if you select the largest or the smallest word. You just want to select one of the links and choose new CSS rule right there. The selector name, you can see that I'm targeting the ID wrapper. That's my main wrapper div. And then within that div, I'm looking for the div called navigation. And within the navigation div, the navigation div is just this long thin one that contains my links. I'm looking for A tags. The A tag uh, is the anchor tag that you get when you uh, create a link. So any A tag, essentially any link within the navigation div, whether it's there or whether it's not there, we want you to style with this particular rule that we are about to create. So we're going to hit OK. And the first thing we're going to change is the text properties. We're going to set the font family to Arial. The font size. Ooh, let's try something like 16 pixels, and we're going to hit apply there. It doesn't look too bad. We're going to get rid of the text decoration, so set that to none. That's going to get rid of that lower uh, underline. Hit apply. There we go. Very nice. Font weight, bold. Apply again. Okay, looking good. And the color, we want it to be the same color as the Mystic Cloth color up there in our logo. So I'm going to click and hold on my color drop down menu, and I can drag this eyedropper over and just pick up that extremely dark purple color. There we go. Now that we've done that, we need to move on and begin creating our background. And in order to get this background behind this text, we need to display them as a block level element so we can set a size to these links. So we're going to come down here to the block category and just choose display block. We're going to hit apply. You're going to see that immediately that stacks all of our links up, almost as if they have their own div wrapped around them. So we're displaying these as block level elements. We're going to go to the box category. We're going to set the width to 100. 
and the height to, yep, yeah, you guessed it, 35. Hit apply. And you can see that we now have these nice little dotted boxes surrounding our links, which happen to be 100 by 35. However, our problem is they're stacked one on top of another and not lined up like a true navigation bar. The fix is quite simple. Here in the box category, under float, just type in the word left. We're going to float these to the left, hit apply, and there we go, we fixed our problem. You may, however, notice another problem. That is, our text is both to the left and it's way up in the buttons. We want, them to, we want our text to be centered and in both directions, centered horizontally and vertically. So we're going to come over here to block and we're going to choose text align center. Hit apply. You can see that aligns our text uh, like that. Now we want to lower the text. We're under type. We're going to come to line height and we're going to try about 30 pixels. I'm going to hit apply. That looks pretty good. Maybe we want to bump it up just a tad, 32. Uh, that looks perfect. All right, we're going to hit OK, and we need to drag our background image in now. I'm going to hop over to Bridge, and you can see I have ro.jpg right here. I'm going to drag it right into Bridge. I'm going to drag this over a little bit. I'm going to pull this. I'm going to drop it right on top of the Images folder. And if I roll down, there's ro.jpg. Close up the Images folder, and I'm going to double click on that layout, or excuse me, that CSS rule right up here in the CSS Styles panel. So wrapper, pound to navigation A, double click on that. And background, we're going to choose a background image, go to Browse, we're going to hit Site Root, double click on the Images folder, and find ro.jpg, hit OK. Now, we're going to specify that there's no background repeat, so background repeat, no dash repeat. The X position of the background is left, and the Y position is top. This is going to be important because this positioning is what we're going to change to achieve our rollover look. So we're going to hit Apply, and you can see, look at that, our buttons now have backgrounds. Hit OK. And in order to create the rollover, it's Super easy. We're going to select layout.css and create a brand new CSS rule. And you can see wrapper, pound navigation, A. Same exact selector as before, but after the A, we're going to type colon, not semicolon. This is a true colon, and the word hover. So we're going to say when this A tag is hovered over, when you roll over one of these links, I'm going to hit OK. What we want to happen is background. All we need to do is change the Y position. Y, instead of using the top, use the bottom. Hit OK. Now, we're going to save all this, Control S, and or, that'd be Command S for those of you on the Mac. And I'm going to select layout.css here and Command or Control S to save that as well. Come back to my source code and just hit Design View. And now I'm going to hit F12 to preview it out in a browser. When I roll over any button, we get our rollovers. All right. Now you can see that the background is showing up, but there really is no background there like that. That is what you're seeing, no background. So how do we fix that? Well, it's quite easy. Remember, we left Photoshop open a moment ago, so let's hop back over to Photoshop. We're going to get rid of this lower layer, or the, yeah, the lower layer, excuse me. Junk that by dragging it to the garbage. And I'm going to use my rectangular marquee tool and select this top gradient. Go Image Crop, Commander, Command or Control D to deselect that, and then go Image, Image Size. I just want to make sure that the height is still, in fact, 35, and it is. Now that we've done that, grab the crop tool and just bite off a chunk of this uh, button just like that big. It can, that can actually only be one pixel wide if you want. I'm making it a little larger for the sake of showing you. Hit the enter key to commit it as I just did. Command shift option or control shift alt to save for the web. Uh, that'd be command shift option s or control shift alt s and a high or quality at 75 again. Save and we're going to say ro nav bar BG. Again, the name doesn't really matter. It's just a JPEG file. Save it. And now we can close this Photoshop document. Uh, no, we don't want to save it. Hop back over to Dreamweaver. Bring up the bridge. And here is my rollover image. I'm going to drag this and drop it in the images folder. Again, we don't need to worry about checking it out. But what we do need to do is come up here to Wrapper, Navigation, double click on that, and uh, come over here to Background. Set the background image to RO Navbar BG, hit OK, and just specify only repeat along the X, hit OK. And you can see we have filled out the background. I'm going to hit F12, it's going to tell me I need to save these files. The file I need to save, by the way, is just layout.css. You can see it's got the little asterisk next to it. Yes, I want to save it, and look at that. We have our rollovers. Super easy to create these things. I'm really, once you do them a couple times, it doesn't even take you as long as it took me to sit here and explain to you how to do it to set these up. They're super easy to do, and the really cool thing about them is I'm going to go to Code View, and uh, right up here, making sure I'm still in that navigation div, I'm going to create a new word. I'm just going to say misc link for miscellaneous link, like so and come back to design view. I'm going to highlight that link and I'm going to give this a dummy tag. I'm just going to say shift and the number three 
to link that, hit tab, and look at that. I automatically have my link set up. I'm going to save this and just hit F12, and there it is. It's set up with its own rollover. So it's that easy to create a navigation bar, which essentially is going to update itself uh, you know, to a certain extent when you add links. So that's how you create these pixie style rollovers in Dreamweaver. And really, you can do a lot more than just creating navigation bars with these rollovers. You can do all kinds of things. You can make, you know, little check marks, stars appear, all kinds of different things with these rollovers. Really cool stuff. Uh, and obviously, a big plus to these is you don't have to worry about setting up any kind of preloading. So, that is how you create these particular rollovers uh, using Dreamweaver. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. I certainly hope you've learned something. And uh, please go check out the site. That's www.tutvid.com. Thanks for watching.